We got Kyle Bodywork. Kyle Bodywork in the building. Yeah, and gentlemen, I held. Yeah, and Justin. <laughs> Could you guys turn turn it this way and it'll full screen you? And ladies and yeah. gentlemen, is that, right? that is right. Ladies and gentlemen, sleeping with sirens in the building. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> gentlemen, I appreciate you guys doing this. Thank you so so much. Uh, first. The album, Complete Collapse, comes out October 14th. We want to plug that right away. Um, I did read I did read at one point that there was a Linkin Park Minutes to Midnight influence on this album. Could you go into that a little bit? I don't know about the whole album. I'm The, the first song maybe has like a little bit of a vibe. I think it's probably just the clapping in the beginning. But I mean, Linkin Park is definitely a huge... Sorry, we're outside. Uh, we we we're in Nashville rehearsing, so we're we're like at dinner right now, just popping out. But uh, Linkin Park is a huge influence on on me. Chester is like a big influence on me vocally, and um, and so yeah, like I take that as a compliment, you know. Like anything that is is taken in that context is is just a vibe because that band, like I literally grew up like Hybrid Theory was like the record that started it all for me. So yeah, I love that. Me too. I used to be part of the of the LPU fan club back in the day. Were you? Were yes. You, hell yeah, uh, dude. We just heard about the Jack news. I imagine that's something that you guys have known for a while. Maybe just the it was so timed because you start touring a couple of days. Or did that just surprise you? No, no. Uh, so Jack, yeah, it is what it is. You know, like we we wish him the best, and we're just we're moving on and doing our thing. You know, like but he's he's still a homie, and you know, like it is like music is is kind of weird in in the sense to where it's like. He found a place and he's stoked where he's at and uh, and we're stoked where we're yeah. at. So we're going to keep cruising and this tour is going to be badass and we're stoked. We have awesome, awesome stuff in the future. So it's all Hell good. Hell yeah. Uh, we're excited for it too. Uh, why did you guys call it Complete Collapse? So it's kind of a play on words in a sense of like, so, you know, we, we wrote the record during the pandemic. Uh, we had put out How It Feels To Be Lost did like one and a half tours on it and then COVID hit. So we all went home. So we didn't really have a chance to like, even like really work that record. And uh, we feel like that was one of the best records we'd made as a band. So it was kind of strange to, to do all that work and then go home. Um, Complete collapse is just kind of like looking at the world we live in and seeing it kind of burning around you and just having this whole, like, you know, this, this, this vibe of, trying to carry on without being affected by it i think that this record for me personally is just coming to grips with the emotional aspects of how to deal with life and how to like be mindful of your emotions and then also just kind of looking at society as a whole and just kind of how we look at things and uh putting it all into perspective now when you say that i the majority of the record was done like pre-covid does that mean while you're sitting on it for so long, you kind of had the chance to like remix it over and over again and, and change little things and perfect it. And and a two part question: Were were you sitting on the the uh, the feature with Spencer of Under Oath that long, or is that something that kind of came about in the final stages? No. So uh, what I, what I meant was we did our last record, How It Feels to Be Lost, and we toured it for like a year and a half, and or less than that probably, right? We did like. Oh uh, no, we only did about. Uh, one and a half tours really. It's like yeah. a month and a half of shows. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got the, we got the news, literally on the last day that there's going to be no more touring going on. We got home, I went to a show, and that was it. Yeah. So, so I guess to answer your question, yeah, we had a bunch of songs that we had worked on at home because we had nothing else to do. But the Spencer thing was kind of like, that was towards the end. I was actually looking at my phone today. It's been exactly one year since this is all, like, all of the music's been done. Yeah. It's almost exactly a year today. Does it, does it so. suck? I, I, my bad, we have a little technical thing. I know it's, I, I, being that it's a year that you sit on the record, uh, does it, 
does it suck having to wait that long? I know it's like a timing thing and, and label stuff, blah, blah, blah. But is it kind of like a pain in the butt that you just have to just be like, man, I just want to show the world because this every music. Time out, every time you put out new music, you always think it's like the best stuff that you've done to date. You know, like we try really hard to keep topping what we did last time. I think, yeah, it was definitely probably for me is the hardest one because I'm just itching to like play these songs live, you know? Definitely. Yeah, they're just translate live very well. Just you know, rehearsing and stuff this past week. Um, they just sound huge. It, it, Hell it's, yeah. It's definitely a step forward and a, and a step above the, the last record. And I love the last record. I wish we could have toured it more, but hey, you guys got to keep pressing on, you know? It's yeah, true. we can tour it now. Two days, baby. Two days. Let's do a, let's do a couple of fun questions. Um, All right. What is the worst gig you guys ever played? Like everything went wrong at this show. <laughs> Jerry's worst Pizza. Gig? Jerry's Pizza. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah Where's that a, at? Uh, it's in uh, Bakersfield, uh, California. Bakersfield. Yeah, there's a pole right. Oh, I, li- I live like an hour from there. What is that? I said I live about an hour from there. I know exactly what you're talking about though. The pole in the middle oh, of the fun. stage. And it's yeah. just, it's like so loud. It's like it's such a, a base, small it's basement. It's like a moldy yeah. basement, low ceilings. I mean, the venue, the venue is cool. The guy that owns it, that's cool. And like the people that come yeah. out to the show is cool. But like, just, great. just playing in that small basement would just, it's like playing in a practice space. I think the first time we played there, we, we got paid in pizza. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you got paid. So this would have been a couple of years back for sure. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, nobody showed up, but here's a couple large pies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is what it is, but here's some pepperonis. Uh. But um, hey, so uh, what do you, do you guys have any weird rituals before you before the the show begins? Like Justin, do you do like any kind of crazy sweeping patterns that just to warm up? Kellen, do you have like a weird lemon hot tea, anything like that going on? Hot tea. I usually rip the biggest dab I can take. Hell yeah. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> yeah. I feel like cool out i'm like already at like a thousand percent so i gotta take it down to a hundred i love it so probably uh indica for sure then i would imagine kellen does his warm-ups and stuff and smart he drinks his tea and stuff <laughs> i did I, don't have I, I did i did smoke weed with justin like one time i think overseas. oh yeah and he danced around and yeah and i and i i i, I went full anthony green mode dude i was like dancing i was i was like rubbing the energy off my mic dude speeding it to the crowd like this hell yeah that's awesome it was like i feel like time slows down when you smoke so for me like you know i I, I was i was i was stoked for three songs and then i was like damn we must almost be done and then it was only three songs in yeah uh I know you said Linkin Park Hybrid Theory was a big influence, but let's go back like even further than that. What made you want to pick up a microphone in general? And Justin, what what guitarist made you want to be like, I want to play like him? Dude, honestly, my dad used to play air guitar in the kitchen and like in the backyard. He never knew how to play an instrument. But I always just thought he was so cool, like just rocking out and, you know, mm-hmm. grilling out in the backyard like a dad would do, like playing air guitar. I was like, I'm going to get a real guitar to show my dad I can play it. And uh, he bought me this. So he didn't photo. play. He he was just air guitar yeah, king. Huge music fan. Uh, but he bought me this bass. This, the brand was uh, Rogue Bass. Never heard of it. Still have never heard of it since. And uh, You got to find one, dude, just I, to have it. I, we actually got like two guitars. Like me and my brother got guitars for Christmas. And I was like... Well, dude, everybody's got a guitar. I want to. I definitely want to be in the band. So I traded mine for a bass guitar, and then, you know, I was the only guy that played bass. And like, you know, I just played the top one. But yeah, yeah, it ended up working out. Hell yeah. There's a lot less players in there as guitarists. That's so. true. Yeah. Does does? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. For me, I think just like. Just being kind of like the outcast kid at school, you know, I feel like music is the one thing yeah. that I feel like uh, made me stand out. You were the so, cool kid. After yeah, yeah, I was, I was cool yeah. when I could like sing and, and do that. So that was... Kellen could, can beatbox too, so that's how he got... I'm not doing the... it right now, though. He so won't do it right now, but that's how he got his first girlfriend. Did <laughs> 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 him. Sorry about my dog, Ben Rock. Or his wife. Hell yeah. She thinks it's freaking beatbox. She has him do it every morning. You guys are jokesters. I love it. 
Hey, uh, so what was it like being on no cover, dude? Uh, I imagine Ash calls you up one day and just like, dude, I got this idea where we're just going to check out a bunch of badass local bands from, from all over. What was that phone call like? And are you excited for season two? Yo, so, um, yeah, I did Paradise City and I played like a small role in that. And that was Ralph. crazy because Ralphie. Yeah, yeah Ralphie. and uh, that was crazy because I'd never really done the acting thing before. So it was uh, it was an experience just being, um, you know, alongside some of these amazing actors that have, you know, done these crazy TV shows and movies and just like learning the craft was crazy. Uh, and then Ash told me about No Cover and I was like, sure, I'll try to be a host, you know. It would, but dude, like honestly, I had no expectations and going in and just like getting to watch like these amazing, um, sorry, going in and getting to watch these amazing artists playing in front of these incredible celebrity judges like Alice Cooper and Lizzie Hale and just having the, um, just the balls to get up there and like play these original songs was like super inspiring. And uh, so it was, it was yeah, a pleasure to be a like part of. Really, really, really Dude, good. Dude, they were all really good. Yeah. I mean, imagine the pressure of like playing in front of those people. And on like a TV show. With no audience. Yeah. For real, that, that's not easy to do. There's no, there's no, you know, crowds feeling the vibe. It's just like silence the whole time you're playing. Yeah. That's a little yeah. awkward for sure. Uh, we've actually had a chance to interview a couple of them, um, which is which is pretty cool. Did you Do you agree with who won? Or is there a particular band that you kind of were like, man, I wish this band had gone a little bit further? Um, yeah, I really liked the Night Spins and I really liked Native Howl a lot. I think both those bands were like definitely standouts for me. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's a couple of artists that could have gone farther, but I think like, dude, it came down to like song choices. I think that was like a super important thing. Like make sure you like roll with like the best song you have. And I think some of the, uh, the artists picked like, a song that wasn't as good as like their best song at first and it kind of bit them in the ass i think yeah it is i mean it was tough it was tough all around um let's see do you guys play video games and if so what's the best best video game ever made Ooh, either grand theft auto because you can literally just you can do anything yeah or i'm like a big i'm big on racing games okay it's like driving around like yeah, Need for Speed at- Underground and Turismo and all that stuff? Yeah, it also sucks when like a 10-year-old kid just whoops your ass and you're just like, dude, come on, <laughs> man. It's worse. Like, I have to work tomorrow. I'm going to be <laughs> bummed and I got to tell all my friends I just got my ass beat by a 10-year-old kid. But they don't have to work tomorrow. Yeah, that's why I also don't use the microphone because I'm just like, dude, I'm going to end up calling a kid a bad word and then it's going <laughs> to write down my screen name and then take it to the cops. <laughs> Kel, what's your favorite video game? Um... You're a Switch guy, right? I like the Switch. Um, I like I like old old stuff. Like I love Goldeneye. I just got like a 64. Oh, I, I found, found like a Nintendo 64. 64 in the storage unit. We should bring it out. I have one at home. And in, in the storage unit. Oh damn! All right. Yeah. yeah. Bring it out on the I like floor. Mario Kart. I like uh, Goldeneye. I like um, I, I like I like Wii Sports. That's dude, a fun one. I like stuff that you can like interact with people. You know. We did play um, Wii Bowling when we recorded a record that we never put out. We did Wii Bowling for, <laughs> every night. Uh, yeah, for about two months straight. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Hold up. You, the record you never put out. What do you mean? Oh, we had a couple of those. Yeah, dude. Okay, is one of them another acoustic album? No, but we might be doing another acoustic album after this. Another. Excellent. This was <laughs> yeah. Um. No, we. Like, here's the thing. Like, I think that we we want to be, like, as authentic as possible. And we want to be able to make, like, the best music for yeah, if you're not feeling it, the people just... that listen to it. Yeah, and if you're not feeling it, like, there's no reason to put it out. But I think at some point we will probably release, like, a B-Sides and, like, songs you've never heard like of. A like, a vault. Yeah, like, a vault. Yeah. Like, double disc, like, I mean, LP, dude, you know? We have That would be hundreds, awesome. Hundreds. hundreds. Yes, hundreds of finished Song. Yeah, because when you go in the studio, you record yeah, we, a bunch of songs, right? So you have like all these extra demos that never see the light of day. So yeah. we have a ton of stuff. I have seven. I have seventy of them on my phone that have never been released. I mean, so, I, do you guys mind if I even ask this? But is there any way this a, a twenty second snippet of a song that we've never heard? Uh, we have it on us. Yeah. Okay, I, I gotta try. I gotta try at least. I try. 
want to put it out, you know? Yeah, yeah no, no, I get it. I get it. I totally understand. I totally understand. What's what's regarding the set that everyone's gonna see starting in two days? What is the hardest song to play from a vocal and guitar perspective? On guitar, probably, probably new, the both, new stuff both vocally better. and probably, probably the newer stuff. Um, like, uh, so I mean, songs that haven't even been released that we're you know rehearsing right now. Um, you know that we may play later on the tour. So a lot of the new stuff is like it's a lot more challenging to play. It's a lot, um, it's a lot more riffy, you know, a lot more like in your face. Um, and so those parts, you know, you got to really get them spot on. Otherwise, it sounds very messy. So we just took a lot of time going over a lot of the new stuff that we're planning to play fairly yeah. soon. And I think it's probably the new stuff. So the I mean, set. Even how I think I think that it's difficult because, like we were saying earlier, we're like we had a record come out like before the pandemic, so we're playing a lot of stuff off that, which we'd never played live really. Yeah. And now we have a new record, so we're learning a lot of new stuff because not only are we playing like crosses and like bloody knuckles, you know, to start off, but we have like new singles coming out mid tour that yeah. we're gonna have to like learn how to play live, you know, and yeah. throw into the. But um, I think for me, like a lot of the new stuff, I did like overlapping vocals, so. I don't think it's really challenging for me as it's more challenging for like Nick to like have to learn how to yeah. like sing Play things sing, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. like my register, you know, so yeah, going back to gotta go up way up here like that. <laughs> yeah. you think he did that note and he tries it. He's like, yeah, I can do that or no, I can't. Do, I can't do that one, dude. All right. Well, <laughs> That's I'm funny. Fast. Let's let's pretend for some weird reason. Uh, Ash is like, fellas, I love you. Here's $10 million each, but only to Justin and Callan. Or the rest of the band too, but what what dream car would you buy, and what dream vacation would you go on anywhere in the world? I'd probably do an original, um, uh, like old school Cobra, because they're like millions of dollars, and then I would put it in a, a storage unit for about ten years, and then sell it and double my money. There you go. It's a businessman and right I there. Have <laughs> Um, you're a Jaguar. You like yeah, all the old I want Jaguar. like an old Jaguar. Like, there's this movie called Begin Again that I love, and the guy in that movie drives like a Jaguar Mark X, is what it's called. Ooh, or how about one of those Earth Roamers, so you can just drive anywhere in the world. The ones that can like a, float on the water and all yeah. that. Oh, that would yeah, be, cool. be cool. And vacation, I like to go to Maui. That's like my favorite spot. Just like chill there for like four or five days. Next Ooh. to the pool or on the beach, I put take your phone it, on airplane mode. I take it back. I wouldn't spend any money on a car. I'd buy an island somewhere and never come back. <laughs> He's gone. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I know it's been a while since this particular moment has occurred, but when did you guys have your mama, I made it moment? Uh, that was probably the first warp Tour that we ever played for me. Yeah, it was really surreal, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like... I feel like that was like probably the biggest crowd we'd ever played for, and we had no idea what to expect. We didn't know if there'd be people watching us or not, and just walking out there. I remember the first time that many you, people was, you like went to walk up and you turned around. And I was like, "What?" And you said, "There's actually people out there." Like tons of like people, a yeah. lot of people out there, and then it made us all really nervous. We <laughs> stood, up, but I just remember being like, "I've never, I've never been to a like because when I was a kid, I didn't really go to Warp Tour or anything like that." So. For me, it was like all of that was like new and fresh. Like I had been to like one Warped Tour day and then we played. So, you know, walking out and like seeing all those people in there like up there for us was pretty crazy. Hell yeah. I have uh, two two uh, chat questions coming in. Can we expect a lot more screaming on the new, the new record? And any plans to go to the Philippines? Nice. Uh... So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of heavy songs on this record. I think that it's very uh, well evenly stacked. I like to tell people that it, if you like our first record, if you like Let's Cheers to This and you like Madness, then you're going to love this record because there's like an even split between those three. So I think that if you're into those records, then you're going to really love this record. Yeah. Um, as far as the Philippines, yes, we are planning oh, on yeah. going back to Southeast Asia. Uh, we're, we're planning to hit as many places as we can on this tour. Or on this CD Smart and record cycle, cycle yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyone that's asking, like, are you going to come back to where we're we live? We're trying to come yes. everywhere. We're yeah. trying to come everywhere. Well, uh, yeah. Go. Uh, to go everywhere. In doing research before this, I had no idea that at one time, 
there was another singer for the band named Brian Calzini. Do you guys ever keep in touch with him? Nope. He wasn't. Uh, he okay, so I guess technically he he runs the Wikipedia, so <laughs> he can put whatever he wants on there. Yeah, I got you. Jokes aside, Ryan, uh, he was involved somewhat in like some of the early like early demos, demos. Like but then when it came to like recording the actual first record, he wasn't involved. So I think that like, once you press the first record and once you're signed to a label and you're actually starting with the band and touring and stuff. That's considered like a real member, you know? Gotcha. Um, I ask every artist that we have on the show the same question. What is a piece of advice somebody has gifted you guys in your career that completely changed the game for you? Or the worst mistake you made early, early back in the day that you don't want any starting up band to make? The best piece of advice that I'm learning just now that I've actually been teaching myself is that... Um, just because I make music, it's not who I am. It's just something that I do. And it's something that I'm proud of, but it doesn't define me. And that's something that I've had to learn over the years. And I think like just kind of burying your ego has been like something that I've had to learn, but something that I'm proud of as I get older, just to kind of like realize that it's a gift to be able to make music. It's a gift to be able to write songs and to have so many people like, you know, take the words that I write and have them mean something to them. So for me, just like knowing that it doesn't define me and it's not who I am, it takes the pressure off. It, it helps me have less anxiety, but also I understand the responsibility of what I do, you know, yeah. and it's important. Well said. I agree. Yeah. And save your money, kids. What do you <laughs> mean? Don't spend <laughs> one spot. <laughs> one spot. Don't spend yeah. it all on jelly beans. Gotcha. The munchies, the munchies. What's your what's your go to munchie snack on the road? Peanut M and M's. Ooh, for me. Oh. And Skinny Pop. I love uh, I love the kettle corn Skinny Pop. Ooh, like I love a vibe. good squirt soda. <laughs> I haven't had a squirt soda in forever. Whenever go I don't know what to get in like the gas station, the yeah, last store, I just go straight for the squirt. <laughs> and everyone's like, you like grapefruit soda? I'm like, no, I hate it, but I didn't know what to get. I just okay. like the way the bottle looks. It's just the way the bottle looks. Hey, uh, when uh, you got you referenced that you, there's 70 to 100 plus demos that that no one's heard yet. Is there any experimental genres you've not touched yet in any of those demos? I don't, we haven't gone country, but um, I mean, there's some stuff that's like really cool R and B. There's some stuff that's very like stripped back, like quartet style. Um, We've tried everything, I would say, except for probably, like, full hip-hop or full country. Like, yeah. we've got some folky stuff. We've got the singer-songwriter-esque stuff. So there could be, like, an EDM dubstep drop randomly oh, no, in one no. of these demos? Oh, uh, we have uh, Don't Fall Asleep at the Helm. It's about as dubstep as we get. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Justin, is it safe to say that you partied the most in the band after a killer show? I smoked the most pot. I don't... We don't really party anymore. Yeah, yeah, we used to we used to get crazy back in the day, but um, we're old now and it hurts more every yeah. day when you wake I'm up. A, I already I'm getting dust in my eyes right now <laughs> and I want to cry. <laughs> that Nashville dust. Uh gentlemen, yeah. we've gotten through most of the hard questions. Are you down to do some trivia with me and or review a couple of bands that uh support this show? I'm down to do some trivia. We actually have to jump back in because we're having like a manager meeting and we stepped out to do this but yeah let's do some trivia real quick and then we're gonna jump back Your in about to got you yeah, my <laughs> i got you really quick what do you what do you guys know the most about in film or tv one particular movie franchise or tv show that you know the most about i give me a second to look up trivia on it i love movies no 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 but like what what movie like jaws harry potter like what franchise of, of film you know casino quentin tarantino okay 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 <laughs> So I'll go Pulp yeah. Fiction. I'll go Pulp Fiction. Give me a second to look okay. that up. In the meantime, I'll, I'll ask one final question real quick. Um, what is the most exciting place on the upcoming tour that you guys are looking forward to playing? I know they're all exciting, but is there one a little bit more than the others? It's been so long, we cannot wait to get out. Yeah, and let me also say it's hard out there. So thank you to everyone that is coming out to support like any band that's playing. Like If you're buying tickets and you're going out to, to see shows and you're buying merch and buying music thank you so much because yeah, i know how tough, everybody on the road i know how tough it is out there and we really really appreciate yeah. you so thank you 
Hell yeah. I, I don't think I have enough time to look at the trivia, but gentlemen, I appreciate you so much for doing this. You did not have to do it, but thank you so much. <laughs> Safe travels. We're ecstatic about complete collapse coming out October 14th. Yes. Stay safe out there, fellas. Thank you so much Thank for doing this. You. Justin Hills and Kellen Quinn of Sleepwear Science! Yeah, hell yeah! yeah.